Hey there, this is Sean again with another episode of Teardown Tube. Uh, this week, I got this little, uh, it's a laptop uh, pad of DVD burner drive and this enclosure that I got off of eBay. I actually use this for when my netbook, um, the operating system, crashed on that one. Uh, I had to restore the, um, the installation using an external drive like this because netbooks don't have optical drives unfortunately so basically I got this enclosure for like I don't know like 10 bucks or something and the DVD drive or DVD burner drive came from a um, old broken laptop that my friend gave me so it basically cost me like 10 bucks or so so basically just two screws in the back careful uh, not to strip anything because it's just this is cheap you know made in China stuff so you just got to be really careful. It's, you get what you pay for, but it definitely works very well, and I've used it many times even for burning. You want to slide the top off and then lift straight up. And nothing but the shell inside there. And here's the heart of it. This is a standard uh, laptop drive. Uh, just pull off the, the board on the back there and just set it aside. Um, this guy is actually rather interesting. It's the PATA variety. The SATA connector actually juts out a little bit. It looks a little bit different than this guy right here. Um, beyond that, I just had to remove the original bezel and put this flat one which came with the, the adapter. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I had to remove two screws. There's a mounting bracket, um, like an L-shaped bracket that came out there. Uh, in order to screw it into the uh, laptop itself. There's a single screw that holds most of these drives in and it'll usually be marked by a circular disk icon. Now basically for the converter it's rather simple. It's just the PADA interface uh, Let's see if this will focus in. Uh, this guy is the, the controller bridge a USB to PADA. I really need to get a better camera. But uh, that looks like the best I can get it in. Uh, kind of shoddy soldering job here. A few uh, decoupling caps, passives, uh, what appears to be a power regulator here. Uh, electrolytics on the uh, DC input and decoupling the uh, USB power. This is a standard uh, female uh, type B I believe and a main crystal for that uh, bridge controller chip. It's actually really interesting the construction. It's a two board construction so you got uh, this guy here which houses just the jacks and then it's using surface mount pads it is right uh, right angle soldered just that's the only thing holding this board and this board together are these uh, four solder joints or so. Uh, so you, you definitely want to be careful about not flexing this uh, too much. Other than that, very simple construction worth every penny that I bought it for. <laughs> and for the main interesting part, the drive right here. Uh, let me just grab something. So basically. I don't have a paper clip, but I'm using an LED lead. Uh, if you ever get a DVD stuck in the drive, there's a little hole next to the button. Just put the lead into it and kind of try to find it. There'll be a little bit, a little spring or something, and it'll pop the drive out right there. And that's how you get the drive out if you ever need to. Now, opening up the drive, uh, this guy is actually an HP DVD RW. Um, 5 volts, 1.5 amps, standard, do not put pressure on the top of this, otherwise you could screw up the drive, uh, manufactured April 07, uh, pretty good drive so far, I've used it for burning and just external reading, uh, two screws on the top back here, be very careful, these sc screws are pretty easy to strip. Uh, you want to use a small enough screwdriver, Phillips. And now this took me up oh, one more screw here, the front top.
Okay. Now, this took me a while to figure out. Uh, you have to slide the top back slightly. And then you can lift off towards the camera here, towards the, uh, the right side. And be careful not to bend this metal plate at all. It's very thin. It's just uh, aluminum. And that's it. Put that to the side. And here's the drive itself. Now, I'm not going to actually be taking apart the optical element because I still want to keep this in working condition. And if I do uh, totally remove that, uh, I run the risk of, um, you know, messing with the calibration on it and it might not re disc or burn them properly anymore. So I'll be keeping that in there. But from here, you could see the hub motor. It's just a, uh, a brushless, which isn't all that exciting or different. Uh, you have your optical element here. Um, what appears to be an infrared um, photo reflector right in here, which I believe might have something to do with um, detecting whether a disc is inserted or not, uh, just generally. And let's just get this open. There's a little bit of foam on the side to protect the disc from scratching or whatnot. Other than that, very simplistic construction. Uh, let's just open this again. Be careful. There we go. And ta da! The drive normally doesn't extend this far, but it's just because the top lid's off. And so, you can see this long flex cable right in here. Uh, you want to be careful of that. <laughs> it's so that it doesn't, um, doesn't get damaged from opening and closing. Uh, provides some flexibility, which attaches via this. Uh, flat flex connector, um, the uh, ZIF connector right in here. And you'll notice, if I can get this in camera shot, uh, two switches, one right here and one right here. Let me see if I can get lighting a little bit better. And so, what these do is there's this little bar right here, you notice, and it's springy, so that it detects um, well, that, that bar is actually just for, it provides the springiness of the drive when you go to shut it. And when you eject it, it actually pushes out the drive slightly. Um, but these little switches right in here, they're keyed plastic bits in there. And what they do is, they, um, once the drive is closed, it'll activate uh, these so that the, um, the controller can recognize whether the drawer is open or not. You have your main controller chip right in here. It's an Entron Tech uh, branded chip right in there. Uh, another chip right here, it appears to be... I'm not recognizing the icon on that, but it's a 25P16V uh, S16, which, if I had to guess, it might be some sort of... Oh, it's in an 8-pin package. Actually, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> but um, this stuff right near the connector right here most definitely is the uh, power supply. You have an inductor, uh, what appears to be a sort of a localized power rail uh, linear regulator, and then the switch mode controller here, and then a huge honking 6-volt, uh, 100 microfarad uh, decoupling cap for the, for the uh, cap right in here, right next to your uh, PADA input. And other than that, that's pretty much it. Just a lot of passives. I highly doubt that there's anything on the other side of the board. I'm not going to tear it off and risk damaging the ZIF connector right in here. But other than that, very cool construction. I mean, uh, you can see on the other side um, the bottom of that brushless motor there. Um, the, the spring you can see for the. Uh, the, I don't know what you want to call it, but the, the bar that pushes the, the uh, tray out after it's ejected, uh, held in with a screw right there. And right here you have a little bit of plastic which actually hits the bump in the upper right corner right here uh, to lock it in. Other than that, uh, pretty simplistic. So let's just get it back together now. Uh, reassembly is not that hard either. You just... Uh, 
there will be two uh, little indents here. You want to line up the tabs on the front, the top cover uh, with those. Make sure the other side is in properly, not bent. And then you slide it forward just a tiny bit. Then you just get your screws in. Yeah, sorry about the lighting here. My room, one window it's behind me. It doesn't provide optimal lighting, so I'm trying to use a desk lamp. <laughs> There we go. One last screw. That's all in. I'll take the bottom tray. Take the adapter. Line it up. Push it in. Doesn't require much force. And then put it into the bottom. Make sure it's aligned. Take the top, put it on top, slide it forward, take your two screws, uh, screw them in, not too tightly, just needs to hold the top on. Uh, one interesting thing is, um, it has a USB which is usually sufficient enough to provide power but it also has uh, the DC input jack so if you need it came with an, a USB to the this um, 2.5 millimeter uh, standard uh, power jack so that you could actually plug it in if you needed to power if your computer's USB wasn't providing enough power um, so other than that this is actually pretty cool because well I needed it anyway so and it barely costed me anything but um, retail you know retail external DVD burner drives can cost you anywhere from like 50 to you know 80 100 bucks so pretty much the only thing I had to buy was the enclosure and the adapter which was like 10 bucks shipped from China so I'm definitely happy with this and it's worked for everything that I've tried so that's pretty much it for this week if there's you know, any comment that you want to leave, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, uh, just let me know you guys are out there watching my videos, and I'll see you next time, uh, whenever that might be, but, uh, remember, keep it real.